Hello everybody, I hope you are having a fantastic day. I am about to repair uh, my third one of these Cricut makers of the day and I thought I would take you guys along for the ride. Let me show you real quick what the problem is uh, when you open these up. This one isn't too bad, but these little rubber roller wheels here uh, go bad. And this seems to only be a problem. It could be a problem with the other ones, but it seems to mainly be a problem with the uh, latest versions, the makers, the airs, and some of the ones before didn't seem to have this problem. But there is absolutely nothing intuitive to taking this thing apart and fixing it. And so that's why I'm making this video. I've seen a bunch of videos online where people have kind of fumbled their way through it and again respect for making that but the fact that i've done several of these today um allows me to kind of show you what the different pitfalls are and again none of it is obvious uh so before we even start taking this thing apart i'm going to show you what you need and what would be helpful um you are going to need some shorter uh phillips head screwdrivers and so we have to get in some weird places you really only need one that you can torque and so i would recommend one of these i have like a little ratcheting thing here that i put a phillips bit in you can use love this have this 90 degree ratcheting thing here you can also use a little shorty screwdriver although that might be a little tight you want the smallest one of these you can possibly get you can also grab one of these bits and uh, try to do it by hand but you're probably gonna have to get a pair of pliers on there to turn it uh, my favorite thing to do was to start and finish screws with this and then use this for breaking screws but again use what you got you will also need a standard number two screwdriver uh phillips and then in addition to that i've heard some people say that they can use uh smaller phillips but you will need on every one i've worked on a t10 torx screwdriver i'll have links to all this stuff in the description uh, i've also got a couple of clips that you need to get out so you can either use one of these old uh, picket tools for the cricket or you can use a little flathead screwdriver um, you don't need this but it is handy if you have a little thing to magnetize uh, you can run your little bits in here and it will be really helpful when you're working upside down things like that again not required but nice to have uh, you don't need a zip tie, but I'm going to recommend that you have a zip tie to hold the motor in place. And then you're going to want to search around your house for every single flat thing you can find that can pry something. Flathead screwdrivers, spudgers, uh, car tools, uh, bigger spudgers, whatever you can get to um, flat and pry stuff apart. You're going to want it on hand. Butter knives are great. All that kind of stuff. Uh, you're going to need some kind of needle nose pliers. I prefer the kind that have sort of flat ends, but it doesn't really matter. You'll need some kind of little pliers like this. And then at the end, it's very helpful if you have any kind of uh, pliers that open up fairly wide and have little grips here on the jaw for popping some clips back in. Uh, so go ahead and gather that stuff. And once you're ready, let's get started. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is have some kind of towel down. Uh, these things, you're gonna be rotating in all sorts of ways and you wanna make sure that you are not scratching the unit up. So I like to have a clean towel down. Uh, you're also gonna get a little bit of grease on it. So you wanna be careful not to have a towel that you're gonna get in trouble for using. All right, the not obvious stuff is gonna start off with a bang. Um, we need to get this cover off and it seems like uh, you'd be able to just kind of pry it up. And if you watch videos, people kind of dig in here like this. And that's not actually what you want to do. There's a couple things you need to realize. Uh, one is there are, I think, four or five posts in here that are attaching this down. And they actually lean back. So when this comes up, um, you know, you're trying to bend it this way. You're actually sort of bending it against uh, the post. The second thing you need to realize is that there is glue on these two sides right here. And um, in my experience, this side has been nearly impossible to get off. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, and then next of all, you're not actually lifting the whole thing up. As you can see there, the cover is uh, just a thin little piece there and so that's the piece you're trying to get off is just that little cover so you're not trying to dig way down into the machine you just want that cover off and so um what we're going to do we are going to do kind of the opposite of what i said we're going to start by digging in the front and just kind of trying to jostle it loose and see what works loose so the way I like to do it is to put just a very little bit of pressure on this back thing. You can see it's lifting up a little bit there and any kind of pry tool will work. But just 
all you want to do is just kind of jostle it and make it think about its life's choices. Um, you're not trying to actually open it, but you can say, oh, look, hey, it worked out a little bit there. Great. So now as you got that, now you can start kind of working your way down because you just happened to make that work. Now, in my experience, this tool, like a thinner, real thin spudger thing, has been the best um, for just getting in here and just getting it loose. Again, I'm not prying. All I'm doing at this point is just trying to loosen little bits of adhesion and, uh, oh yeah, you can see there's actually liquid glue there. Uh, so this one's put together a little bit different than my other ones. Um, hopefully that's a good thing. Uh, so we're going to just kind of work our way down here and just kind of jostle it loose. Oh, that's fantastic. So the other ones were absolutely just jam stuck at this side. Um, but this one seems like it's going to be a little bit more cooperative. So again, we are just trying to work this up and I'm making this look easier than it was on my other machines. Uh, so we're going to kind of just gently pop this up. Oh my gosh, that is so much better. But as you can see here, there's glue under all these. This glue had run down here. Uh, you know what it was? This one didn't really have much glue in the corner. You can see a little bit here and a little bit there, but nowhere near the amount of adhesive as the other one. But the thing that you can see uh, is that those are at an angle. And so if you go prying straight up on it, you're going to risk breaking these things. And then we're going to grab the T10 uh, screwdriver and we're going to take these four screws off right here. Now, the goal of this is to get this lid off and it might look like the lid is, um, is kind of attached to the back, but that's not what's going on here. This lid is actually sandwiched in a groove and we're gonna show you that in a second. And it's a little bit of a pain, at least it was on the other machines. All right, now I'm not sure how this one's gonna go, but in general, the goal is to lift this up, this, this top here. And as you can see, it doesn't necessarily wanna go. Um, so you kinda need to work it. And it popped a little bit there. So what we're gonna do is just little bits of prying there, little bits of prying. Um, you, you wanna keep this part down. So this honeycomb looking stuff, you wanna keep that down and you wanna work your way up. So I'm gonna have one thumb on here another thumb under here and we're just trying to persuade it to come up a little bit there we go and that's how you do that all right the next step is to flip the unit upside down and it's got four feet under here and you would think that this is all you need to do to take the cover off and you would be wrong for thinking that so what we're going to do is just put your standard uh, number two Phillips screw in here and we're going to take all four of these out. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get some screws out that are in some unfortunate places. And uh, I like to magnetize my screwdriver for this bit, especially for putting it back together. But uh, we're going to get all up in this thing. And uh, the screws are in a place that's going to be kind of difficult to show you. But on the underside of this, there are seven screws, not six, not eight. There are seven screws. And there are four of them that you're going to be able to see when you look in there. Uh, yeah, you can kind of see right there. Maybe I'll put up a picture of what it looks like from the underside. Uh, but there are four that you can see. And then there are also three more that are kind of in the middle of them that are way up like in the front here. And so those are a royal pain also. Um, now you can gently slide this to one side. Don't go crazy with it. But gently slide that to one side. And then I found the best thing to do is to flip the unit completely upside down. So what I like to do is take my right angle screwdriver, my handheld little tiny screwdriver, and get in here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to break the screws loose until they feel pretty easy to where I could get in there and get the rest of it by hand. And then my favorite thing is honestly just this little bit here. Um, I like to go in here and put it in and just twist it out by hand. And again, there are seven of them. Uh, so it's easier to do kind of half and half. And when you're done and you get all seven of these out of here, then come back and see me. I thought about telling you that there were eight screws in there just to see how long you'd look for them, but I decided that'd be kind of rude. Um, so I'm going to refer to this not as the left side or the right side, but I'm going to refer to this as the power button side because that's what's important. Uh, we're going to lift this top off, but we want to be able to get uh, the cord that's attached on this side off. So I'm going to lift straight up. Um, it is going to be a little stuck, so you want to kind of jiggle it just a little bit. 
and we're gonna come over here and we're just gonna set it down like this. And now in order to get this cable off, the easiest thing to do is probably just to use your fingernail. So you're gonna push just a little bit on one side, then just a little bit on the other side, then back on the first side, back on the second side, until it comes out. Then there will be some tape holding it in place. Uh, all the models have this, so you're gonna take that out and stick that back there. And there you go, we have the top detached. Now, before I forget to tell you, there is a lot of goo right here on this side. And so you can touch it, but it's going to leave a big old mess. Uh, so we're just going to encourage you to not do that. Now it is time to get down to business. We are going to be on the power button side where we just took that cable off. And the first thing we want to do is to take this spring off. As you can see, uh, there it has a hook on it the way it is right now this side is open so we're going to get a pair of pliers we're going to grab it by this side and we're going to lift it off now it has a lot of tension uh, so you want to be careful wear eye protection and uh, don't let it go and as I said I like using these flat pliers and we come up right here we grab it and it's got a lot of tension Mm, there you go. Now this is putting all the pressure on the roller uh, on that side and then we're going to have something similar on the other side. Now this right here is what you want to get to. So um, there is a ring here and we're going to be dealing with these rings. Uh, they're a bit of a pain in the butt, but we want to take this ring off. There are a couple different ways you can do that. Um, I'm going to put my screwdriver on here so you can see a little bit better. This thing is kind of the ring if you've never seen one of these goes around two-thirds of the way around the shaft and sits in a little groove and so you can do one of two things you can either use a flathead screwdriver and push it up that way you have to be careful not to slip um, or if you have an old weeding tool from Cricut uh, you can actually put that in there and try to pry it up you don't want to lose it um, you need to at least save one out of the two and so you just go up and you'll be able to get that thing off There you go, easy peasy. Now that you've got that off, um, you can take this bushing off here. So what's going on? We have the thing that the spring was attached to going through two pins, just kind of like a pivot pin here. We get this wire out of the way. Uh, kind of like a pivot pin here that's putting pressure on the roller. Um, and so we want to release that. And so the way we're gonna do that is we're just gonna take any kind of flat item and we're gonna stick it behind there and we're going to gently pry this off and set it to the side. So we have it right there, take it to the side. Now we are done on this side for a little bit, so we're gonna go over to the other side. All right, so when you look at this side, we've got this motor here. You wanna be careful of this little uh, plastic on there that tells the motor where it's at. Um, and we're gonna take off two silver screws on this side and two black screws on this side. When we take off this side, it's gonna allow us to take this bracket off right here that you can see at an angle. Uh, you wanna be a little careful taking this off. There is a gear down there and you don't wanna mess that gear up. So you just kinda of take one side off, then gently take the other side off. So as you can see here, I'm just gonna take the two silver ones off and then I'll come back. The two silver screws are off, the black screw is off, and we're gonna go ahead and loosen up this spring right here just let that hang and then we've got another spring we're going to get to in just a moment uh, but first of all now we can take off the black screw that is the final thing holding this motor on once you have that off then you can actually just lift this bracket right off of that foot make sure you don't lose the screw and set that aside and now the motor itself will lift up oh okay some of these have some of them have a bracket down the bottom that actually goes right through the shaft of the motor or of the gear so you're going to want to back that out just a little bit so it goes off of the motor itself and then here's what i would do um you want to be careful that this motor doesn't just like flop around so what i would do is take that zip tie i told you to get and um put it around this bracket here and go through this hole on the bottom of the motor bracket and then zip tie the whole thing together so that it just kind of stays where you put it. All right, now we're gonna take the second spring off. Uh, so we're gonna grab it with those pliers. Again, protect your eyes, be careful, take it off, and that will release the pressure 
on the roller. Now, one of the many annoying things is that this gear interferes with that um, leg right there. So what most people have decided to do, you'd think you just take a couple screws off. That's not true. You got to take a whole bunch of stuff off. Uh, what most people do is just get back here and get that clip off and then never replace it. So there's another bushing just like on the other side. Uh, you can pivot it up here. I'm going to move it there so you can see it. You can pivot it up there and you just need to flip the ring around into an orientation that's good for you and yank that thing off and then I'll show you what to do. You wanna be careful not to break anything, but I've got it hooked there and pull and the uh, clip is off. Now, at this point, um, the goal is to get this thing out of here. Now, um, sometimes it's easier than others. Uh, you can actually, if these rollers are in your way, you can actually cut these off. This is what you're replacing. Um, but the goal is to move this to the side. And then I found that it's easiest to slide this whole carriage all the way over here. And then once you do that, you can clear it and then gently take it out. And there you go. Um, now this is not uh, symmetrical. This side, if you notice here, has that little uh, shaved part, and that's what allowed us to slide it to the right. This side does not have that. So the uh, that gear side does not have it. The uh, power button side does have it. So we're going to go ahead and take these off. If they're stuck on there, uh, most of the time, if you're doing this video, it's probably because they're falling apart and they're like this. Um, these are the nicest ones I've ever replaced. Uh, so they might be a little bit more tricky, but I usually just get a pair of cutters or something and just start slicing them off. You don't really want to cut the rod, but you just come in here and just, just cut them uh, like that and you make enough grooves in them and they'll, they'll come right off. All right, so the issue with the rollers is that as they deteriorate, they want to slide toward the middle and as they do, they give you all kinds of problems. So there's two different ways that uh, the aftermarket has tried to fix that. The one is uh, with some ones that are really tight that you wind up soaking in hot water and uh, hope that you can get it on there. And then there's another one where they actually put a clip similar to the ones that we just took off. So we're gonna use uh, one of the kinds that go on a little bit easier, but um, have a clip to hold them in place. And that seems to me like the, the better way to go on something like this. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide them on there and they're relatively easy to slide on. Um, and then what you're gonna do is instead of worrying about the roller, uh, stopping itself from sliding over. You're going to take one of these clips and you're just going to push it right here. And the clip goes to the inside. So uh, you should have rod, then rubber, then clip, then clip, then rubber. So we're going to do the same thing. It's easier to slide the rubber on first just so you have it. Um, we're going to slide that on there. And now as you can see, there's it's in the little groove. We're going to slide it as far away from the groove as possible. We're going to take this little clip and we are going to pop it on. You just do this one with your finger, nice and easy, and that will not slide over, stay exactly where you put it. Now, if you really want to, you could buy a second set of clips or this whole set comes with uh, um, four or eight bushings and eight clips. So if you want to, you could use two on either side and you still have enough stuff to do two crickets. So it's only like nine bucks at the time of this filming. So uh, not bad at all. Um, now what we need to do is reverse this process and not everything is just, you know, I know you you want to turn the video off and, and start going in a different direction, but trust me, um, some of this stuff isn't obvious and it's not the exact opposite of the way you did it. So I encourage you to stick around uh, to the end. We are going to reverse this part though. We're going to take the edge that has the shaved and we're going to put that over toward the power side and we're going to gently work that in and then set it down and we're going to go in the other side. Now, if all goes well, you should be able to pretty much go in the bushing on this side. You're going to have a hard time seeing it, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, you're going to go in the bushing over there. Now, if you want to, you can try uh, to slip the ring on there. Now, the fact is once this thing is in intentioned, it's not going to go that way, um, but you are welcome to do that. Uh, either way, I would recommend that you deal with the power switch side first because that is the side that will walk and um, it's also the side that's easier to put the clip on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna take this thing that we took off and we're gonna make sure that we have uh, this little tab facing us and we're gonna stand this up or you don't have to stand it up because you're not trying to film it, uh, but you're going to slip the bushing on the end of the rod and then 
in the two holes just like so. Um, so, yep, let me come over here, just get it sit right and just kind of push it in so everything goes nice. Um, now, this is where we're gonna be putting that clip back on and you could wind up shooting it across the room. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I do it. Again, a lot of different ways to do it, but this is how I do this kind of clip. So, uh, we've got this clip and as you can see here, it is open at the bottom. All right, so what I'm gonna do for your benefit is I'm gonna put this up like this and we wanna make sure that this is on nice and tight. And so you can put a finger on here and then push the bar on this side, make sure you're good and tight. Because the goal is, is to put a clip on this thing, but not just on it, in a little groove that my fingernail is catching on right there. Um, so it's obviously a lot harder for me to do it this way, but I'm gonna do it so that you can kind of understand what's going on. Uh, if you look at that clip, it is open on the bottom. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on top here and we are going to rest it just like that. Now, as you can see, it's real close to the metal bracket behind it and that's gonna kind of get in our way. What I'm going to do is take my wire cutters and I'm gonna put the bottom jaw on the actual um, post itself and then I'm gonna put the top jaw on the clip and I'm gonna try to go a little crooked so you can see. Uh, so I'm on the bottom jaw and then the top jaw and I'm gonna click it down and bam, we are right on there and uh, that will not come off and that will stop the thing from going that way and it's not gonna go the other way because of the tension. And then we're gonna take our spring and the way I like to have this one on the, on the right side is I wanna do it so that the uh, open hook is at the bottom and the closed hook is at the top. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to lift the machine up again so you can see. And uh, I'm gonna hook this right here on that little hole. And the reason why I did that is because it allows me to have this part of the hook to the outside, which is just a little easier for me to grab, especially when we're doing it like this. And I'm gonna grab that with my pliers, again, trying to protect your eyes and go over the top and bam, make sure that you're on there. Now, again, a lot of tension on that spring. Uh, so be very, very careful when you do that. Now we are going to cut our motor loose because it's time to put it back. Um, it's a little tricky. You wanna make sure that everything meshes up properly. We're gonna push this gear on all the way. We're gonna make sure that when we put it on that this bracket is uh, in the hole. So what I'm going to do is to put just a single screw in, not even super tight, in the lower left-hand hole. And I'm gonna let that be sort of my alignment screw. Again, not even tightening it down. And I wanna make sure everything looks good. I wanna make sure that that gear uh, has meshed up there and all that kind of stuff, that everything just feels like it's fitting good. I'm not binding or anything like that. And then I'm gonna take this bracket that we took off and I'm gonna have to kind of work it in here. So I'm gonna get it on this post and we're gonna pivot it around so that it fits right over the holes that hold the motor bracket. So in other words, it's bracket and then this. And once I feel good about that, I'm gonna put one of the black screws in the upper right hand corner, which will hold this bracket and the other side of the motor in place. And if everything seems to feel good to me, then I can go ahead and put all four screws in, two silver on the left, two blacks on the right. We have two more springs to deal with. Uh, this one over here, you'll be able to see better once I let it go. Uh, that is real easy to deal with by hand. The other one is definitely tighter. So we've got this other one here that has um, a little bit of tension on it right there. First thing you wanna do is make sure that's all the way back. So I'm gonna use my spudger to make sure that is sitting flush up against this piece of metal. Um, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick something in from this side and I'm gonna lift it up so that I can hook the spring onto it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna use my spudger. As you can see, you really can't see a whole lot. Well, you can see this thing moving right there. Um, that's because this is my tension spring. So I'm gonna, I can lift it up and now all of a sudden I have access to that to put um, the spring on there. So now you can see the spring is attached to that little piece of metal there. And uh, what I'm gonna do is get my little pliers and again, very careful, get my pliers, get a good grip, and then I'm gonna come up and we're gonna link right to there. So we are, there, there, and now this thing has all kinds of pressure on it. 
Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, all right, Dan, I got it. I'll just put it together. Everything will be fine. And I'm telling you that that is a bad idea. Um, and I'm going to show you why in just a moment. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is turn this unit back around toward myself so that you can see what we're dealing with. Uh, we have holes here and here and here. We're going to have some holes here. But what's really annoying is that we have all these little slits here and the back has to be in all of these slits. And once you uh, put it on, there's no real adjusting it. You can't just manipulate the back to get it to, to go in. You've got to get it right the first time. So do not try to put the cover on until you understand what it is you're trying to do. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the cover. We're going to plug in the power button and then I'm going to show you how to put it on. So over on this side, we're gonna put in our power button exactly the way we took it off, just opposite. So we're gonna come in here, plug it in, just be gentle, take your time. You don't have to force it. Use your fingernail, push it up both sides, make sure it's tight. Um, go ahead and take that piece of tape and stick it back on there to hold the wires in place just for the heck of it. All right, now when it comes on, um, what's got to happen is nothing about it is going to feel natural uh and so you're trying to force all of these things here in their counterparts and i'm trying to see if there's a good way i'll show you another one I'll, I'll pop another one up on the screen that i've already taken a shot of and the first thing is that this back is ribbed for someone's pleasure but it's not mine um and there's these little hooks on the back here and if you don't put this on exactly right the first time, then the unit will not fit together right. The uh, back will be bulging or the top will be bulging. And then you also have all these little stems up here that those screws went into. So uh, we are gonna put the power switch on and then we have to be pretty dang careful putting it back together. Um, and so what you wanna do is try to line this up so that you are in those grooves. Because again, once you get it down, there's no repositioning it. Um, you've got to take it all back off and start again. So you want to make sure that you absolutely have it in because it will look like crap if you don't. Um, so this one went fairly easily so far, um, but I'm telling you, it can get real complicated. So you want to just gently work everything in here, make sure everything kind of goes in its own little home. Uh, yeah, we're not quite down there yet, so we're not home yet. Um, it's kind of wiggle you have to like I'm gonna lift it up a little bit because you want to make sure that every single one of these back uh, things these cleats is in exactly right otherwise your machine will be all kinds of weird bulged in the back and uh, it'll look like you took it apart and we don't want that so you'll know that it's right when you flip it upside down and you don't see any bulge there and you don't see any bulge here at the top um, those are the two places where it's gonna want to fight you now um, it's very easy to knock it out of this position. So what you want to do is you want to keep it kind of pressed as tight as you can, flip it upside down. And at this point, go ahead and put your four screws back in. So once you get them in, you just want to kind of snug them down. You don't really want to bear down on them. Just go ahead and get them so that like, you know, they give you some resistance, but that's about it. Then go ahead and put your caps on. Now we're back to those fun upside down screws. Uh, so we're gonna open the thing back up and really there's nothing magical I can tell you here uh, other than the fact that when I'm putting these screws in, um, I definitely start them either with my finger or with this. Again, if you can be magnetized, it helps. But you basically start the screws like this. Sometimes you'll be able to get them in really tight with just your finger. Uh, other times you'll want that little angle thing. Like, see that one I got a good grip on, so I feel good about that. Uh, go ahead and do all seven and then meet me back here. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? Uh, so now the next thing we want to do is put this back in. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. You're going to drop it in, make sure all the screws are aligned, and then go ahead and grab your T10 uh, Torx screwdriver and put the four screws in and then come on back so as i pointed out at the beginning of the video uh these things are at a very weird angle so you want to kind of start from the back and work your way forward and putting them in don't force it take your time get everything to line up if you need to tilt this back just a little bit i mean don't push real hard but if you need to tilt it back a little bit do that and it's back to the front back to the front and there you go 
Last but not least, you know and I know that you got fingerprints all over this thing in that process. So go ahead and do the right thing. Uh, get some isopropyl alcohol, get a rag, and clean your mess up. Um, you know, whoever you did this for, even if it's yourself, uh, go in there, clean it up. This thing, they get a lot of dirt down here. You don't really need to clean the rollers themselves with uh, alcohol, but you can still come in here and clean that up. Just make it look a little prettier and uh, so that when you give it back to whoever you did this for, uh, it looks good. So I'll scrub that a little bit better. But hey, I really appreciate you watching. I hope you found this helpful. Um, I've got links to all the things in the description, the tools, the parts, uh, all my recommended stuff. Also, if you have somebody who's interested in cricket, um, I've got a few other things. My wife absolutely loves cricket. So I've got a few other things you may want to consider picking up that she absolutely loves that are Kim approved. Um, so yeah, anyway, thanks for watching and have a great day.